On this episode of The Silburn Show, the Solution-Oriented Summit, creating a platform for effective discourse, seeking solutions and impacting actions, tackling knife and gun crime in our community. Let it not be our legacy. With your host, Silburn Sidiel and Stefan Gislane. With Reverend Ezekiel Thompson on loving your city. Do you love your city? I find this one very interesting about loving your city. And I said, let me bring different persons from different spheres. Reverend Ezekiel Thompson. I've got a reverend here. Uh, he rides around London in the mornings, like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, praying for the city of London, praying for the, the, the peace in the city. And, uh, and he's here today, and he's going to talk about loving your city. I'm very interested to find this one by Reverend Ezekiel Thompson. Uh, John Fisher, I think I saw John Fisher around. Can you and, and Mrs. Fisher please come around here? Um, Reverend Ezekiel Thompson. Let's go, sir. Thank you. Round of applause for Reverend Ezekiel Thompson. Sir Thompson, how are you? Hey, bless you, man. Good <laughs> to see you. Good to see you. Well good, done. Good, good, good. Now, what is it about loving your city? And I'm not going to let you talk about that. As a matter of fact, you might just preach, but just feel free. <laughs> you know? Um, in the mornings, you ride around London, like five o'clock, six o'clock, in the wheels while everybody's sleeping. Um, tell us about that and what is that passion about and where did that birth from for the city? Mr. John Fisher, please take a seat. Um, <laughs> recently, we had a, we had a, a talk. Um, and it's quite interesting that... <clears throat> It's, it's quite interesting. Um, there's a part in the Bible that says the people of, the, the, of darkness is wiser than those of the light. So the, the boys that, that do the postcode, what do you call it? Postcode? Yeah, postcode, uh, yeah. Postcode control. The, the, uh, what the, do you call it? Postcode? Postcode control. Postcode, postcode war. war. Yeah. Postcode control. Yeah. So you have a set of guys that they, they take a postcode and they say, okay, this is our domain and no other person can come in. And they take territory, they take charge, and nobody is meant to come in. And then we find that we have churches that are within these domain that these boys are controlling. And yet there's a lot of killing. You have one, two, three, four churches. And yet you find that these boys are taking domination and they are stabbing and fighting and killing. And it came to my reali realization the other day that if these guys could make up in their mind that they're going to take control of that area and nobody can come in, and then it, it's happening. Then I realize that they are applying a principle. And I understand that God is not a respecter of persons. That's what it, that this, the, the Bible says. That God doesn't respect you different from me. He doesn't respect the prime minister different from any one of us. He's a respecter of principles. And once you apply principles, then everything will start going into motion for you. So these guys deliberately decide to control an area. And to dominate it and take control and they are doing a very good job at it because they find out that the other boys can cross the line and then you find out that you now are living in fear because these boys are controlling the area so you can't walk late at night you're cautious the time you send your children out because there's a gang a group of gangs that are controlling an area so it came to my mind the other day that guess what now if i decide to take domination and take authority over area and apply the same principle then maybe I could have some control as well so early in the morning about six o'clock I decide to get my bike and I start riding one two I start riding around the streets of London and um, there's a script me there's a scripture that came to me I'm um, in Jeremiah chapter 29 7 Jeremiah 29, verse 7. The, uh, um, Silburn, can you sort these mics out? They're chipping out. One, two, one, two. All right. In the Bible, you, you read Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. It says, listen to what it says. It says, seek the peace of the, pl of the place that you have been brought into exile. Listen carefully. It said, seek the peace of the place that you have been brought into exile and pray for it. For in seeking the peace of that place, you will also have peace. So in, on that scripture, I decided, okay, guess what? I'm going to take a domain and I'm going to pray over that area. 
I'm going to believe God. I'm going to pray over that area. And I'm going to apply the principle that the Bible says. He says, if I pray for the place that I've been brought into exile, I'm from Jamaica. Most of us are from Jamaica. Uh, although we were not forced here, we, we came here for a better life or whatever. He says, pray for the place that you've been brought into exile or been brought to and pray for it. For in doing so, you will also have peace. In praying for the prosperity of the place that you've been brought, you will have peace. And um, as I continue to pray and ride and pray and ride, in my community, I've been living for eight years. Eight years in my community. And there were some boys that normally comes in and they steal stuff. You can never see them. There was one set of guy that came in and stole the neighbor's muffler. You know, the big, big, big white one. I think one is behind here. In the morning, we came and we saw nut and bolt on the floor. So while everybody was sleeping, these guys were busy taking out the mufflers. They came and they stole a BMW. They came and they stole a Benz. And they keep stealing things around the place. And the moment I started praying, it's like, it's like every forces of darkness was being manifested. I came in one morning after my ride, and I, and I saw two of the boys, about three of them on a moped, and another gentleman walking them with a piece of metal. And I said, that's prior. Because after eight years, we have never seen any activity. But because I started praying, I now came and see the neighbor with a metal piece of wire slapping three of them. Now, I contribute that to the prior that the Bible says, if you apply the principle of praying for the place that you live, then you will have peace. The next incident I saw, I came and I saw, there was an, there was, uh, when I was coming in, there was two other guys that were stealing a moped. And right as they were stealing the moped, I was able to see them running through the, the alley with the moped. And I shouted at them, jump on my bike and run them down. And we caught them right in their track. So we were actually seeing things being manifested. We were actually seeing more more things coming together let me give you another example i rode around my my son's school and i i there's seven mountain of influence that controls uh, the society you have the government when i talk about praying for my city we pray for the government we pray for the education system we pray for families we pray for um, the churches we pray for entertainment we pray for media and we pray for businesses these are the seven mountain of influence that forms any culture and so you've got to learn to pray for this area. Because, number one, if you fail to pray for like the government, and you cuss out Theresa May, or you cuss out this one, and you cuss them out, the Bible says if the head is sick, then the heart will faint. That means if the, if the government is sick, there's no way you will benefit or you will have a peaceful life. If, Ter if Theresa May is doing all kind of chaotic stuff in parliament, your it will have a trickle down that your life becomes hard. So you have to learn to pray for the government. So what I do, I would ride to Parliament. I would ride early in the morning, 4 or 5 o'clock to Parliament. And ride around and, and just pray. Pray for the, the, the Prime Minister. If some people don't want to do it, that's their business. But you know what? I want to have peace in this country. Does, does it make sense? I want to come here and don't regret that I come here. You know many people come to this country and regret that they came here? I went to Jamaica in February. And I was shocked at the level of progress that a lot of my counterparts had made. These guys, some of the biggest houses. These guys, some of the biggest cars. And you are in here, think you're living a good life. And when you're shocked, when you compare the, the progress that you made, you're shocked. Am I making sense? Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? You go to Jamaica, and you see some of these guys living some of the biggest life. And you're in this country for 20, 18, 19, 15 years. And it come like, you work like an elephant and eat like an ant. Am I making sense? You work like an elephant. You work hard. And after you work hard, the tax man line up for your money. The gas line up for your money. The brown envelope. One of the scariest things I used to go through is when I see the brown envelope. My heart just start weep. Bro, anybody know what I'm talking about? The brown envelopes. It's a judgment in this country. So you know what? In order to have peace, according to what the Bible says, I pray for the, the city. I pray for government. I pray for it. And let me give you an example. This man just spoke about how difficult it is to be a man in this country. I already come on a student visa. It can be a very challenging thing to climb up the ladder. I came here as a student. I'm um, trying to make a better life. Met a, a, a sister and she had a, a one bedroom. So what do I do? The girl decided to marry me. So I said, okay, let's, let's rock. So I moved with the lady and she gave me, we moved in a one bedroom. But that's, that's, that's a calling, that's a, uh, or, or use, uh, contrary to how we grow up we like to be in control we like to have our own thing 
And as the man said, you can't open your mouth too loud because if you, open, if you talk too loud, you know what's going to happen. You're going, the singer say, okay, take your things and go. So I only knew the power of prayer because the care how hard you work, sometimes it come like you can't make ends meet. Bless your sis. So I went into some serious fasting and prayer. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I cried. I said, God, you've got to turn my situation around. You've got to turn it around. Whatever it takes for me to be the man of my house and to have the thing right and have the thing set, you have to turn it. And guess what happened? Through my prayer, a total stranger came and showed me five properties. And he, he, when I rocked, he, he drove me around and showed me five properties. And the last property that I saw was one of the biggest properties. And I, said, I, I, and I said, I like this property, but guess what? I'm broke. And the guy turned to me and says, don't worry. You're like family. Now, the first time when I saw the man, you know, because he came with his pants down his foot. And he's here, Cain Row. You know the guy that with the pants down his foot? And he's here, Cain Row. And the first thing that came to my mind when I saw the guy, I said, man, what can I jank with this, man? Because I, I needed somewhere. My wife just had two, um, got pregnant. We, she got pregnant. We had one child in the one bedroom. And then she, you know, we was having too much fun. And next baby started come. <laughs> so I was a bit worried now. I said, God, the in law them going to say this man, worthless. I'm going to say worthless. Because if you have one bedroom and three kids in it, it's, 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 it's no good for a man. So I started praying. And my, my pastor friend, I tell him, help me out, please. And he sent the guy come. When the guy came, the, the guy's pants was at his foot. He's here with Kinro and he had a slipper. And when he turned up, I said to myself, man, this man look like a junker, man. Trust me. And guess what? The guy drugged his slippers and showed me five property. And I was reluctant to talk to him. I told my wife, I said, you talk to him because I don't like how him look. And the last property that he showed us was one of the biggest property in Brockley. Three bedroom, big garden. When I saw the garden, I see the kids are running up in it. I said, yeah, I love this one. And the guy turned to me and, and I turned to the guy and said, oh, you know what, man? I'm broke, you know, man. Broke like dogs. The guy turned to me and said, don't worry, man. He's like family. I, I will pay the deposit. I said, oh, how much is the deposit? Him said, 30,000 pounds. Me said, 30 what? Him said, 30,000 pounds. Well, you had, a, you had a sweet part of the story. He paid the 30,000 pounds. I, I moved out in, in almost one day out of the one bedroom because I wanted to kind of get my manhood back. You understand me? I turned to him and I said, take the one bedroom and squeeze out, you know, squeeze out for this property. So at least now, this one is mine, and we can get rid of the wife property. And me become the man of the house now. The man turned to me and says, don't worry, you like family. Somebody say you like family. Like family. <laughs> <laughs> the man turned to me and says, don't worry, take the one bedroom for your two-year-old son in this land, in this country, England. And now I'm a owner of two properties. Come here with one grip. Through the power of prayer. So it can no well that's my secret that's my secret if you treat the country right you can reap the benefit you understand me if you love the government if you pray for the government and pray for the business and pray for the education system you can benefit you can reap the benefit i hear what the scripture says the, the, the scripture says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for who the righteous so that means that there's houses and lands that is here that you can get without even paying a penny am i making sense Come on, man. Uh, listen to this last one. Listen to this last one. Barclays Bank. You know these people rob us up all the while. They take our money without we knowing. So the other day I start riding. I went over, do, um, what do you call it? Docklands, the financial hub. So I wake up 5 o'clock in the morning. I rode over to Docklands and I prayed for finances. I prayed for money. I prayed for this. I prayed for that. I pray that God will release secret. Couple of weeks after, I got a text from Barclays Bank. Mr. Thompson, we refund you. Um, over 1,500 pounds. So me called Barclays and says, I don't know why me deserve a refund. Please explain this to me. They said, Mr. Thompson, it's Barclays, Barclays card, they refund you. I said, please, check it out a little further. He said, okay, Mr. Thompson, we're going to dig. I said, don't bother dig, don't bother dig. You understand me? But two weeks later, they sent me a letter that it was PPI. You know this PPI thing. So the money that them been robbing us, through the power of prayer, God, you know, I didn't apply for it. I didn't apply for one PPI. But true, I learned the art of praying and touching God because of how the situation set. And that's the only way. Because number one, some people are not going to help you. Because everybody trying to help themselves. But if you know the heart of touching the one who owns the house and the land and everything here, I 
call out to God myself and I use the principle like these, like these postcode guys. I go and take a domain and I take an authority over that area and I pray the power of God down. Barclays Bank, God hold them and twist it. So they have to send back the money where they hold me. So let me give you my encouragement that you will find challenges. You will find all kind of people lining up for your money. The gas people and all them people lining up for your money. Learn the art of talking to the one who owns. The Bible says the heart of the, 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 heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And it's like water. God can turn it in whatever direction he can. Theresa May and all them people, God can turn their heart. Parliament, God can turn their heart. The, the, the Barclays Bank, God can turn their heart in whatever direction. So if you know the art of praying, you can turn situation in your favor. And you can live a peaceful life. Somebody say peaceful. peaceful. So, so therefore, Ezekiel, what you are saying is that prayer is one of, part of a key solution. Prayer is, prayer is a major part of breaking the spirit. Mm. The spiritual wickedness in these places. Yes. Because it's the spirit of murder, isn't it? It's the spirit of death. Yeah. The, the, the Lord told me the other day, he says, um, the problem that we are having, most of the problem that we are having, it's, it's, up, it's, it's in the atmosphere. There's principalities and powers. Uh, for instance, you love Peckham. And you'll find out a, a kind of murder that goes on in Peckham. You understand me? All right. Do you know when I'm riding in the morning, I don't see no body praying or doing any stuff like that. Okay, most of the people I saw was Jovia Witness. You know, Jovia Witness. Or you will see some weird people in the park. And you're like, what are they doing in the park at this time of the morning? So the time when people are sleeping is when these witches and wizards out there doing them stuff. And then you wake up now and walk into those stuff. But other people out there are, are applying the principle of taking authority of the principalities and the powers that's operating out there. And before you know it, right over Peckham area. And all the areas I've checked, I checked after I finished pray, is there anything happening over there? And if someone happened up Peckham, I say I didn't ride up there. Yes. So if you want me to come and ride in your area, I have 10 bicycles, I'll give you one and we can ride together. Yeah, I've, been, I've been avoiding that actually. <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got a bike for you anyhow. You know? <laughs> well, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, any questions for Reverend Ezekiel Thompson? Um, I want to thank you so much. Is he, any last word you want to say? Um, well, as I was saying that um, I've been trying to get some people to really tap into this. You know, I've been really trying to get some people to really, I've been trying to get this man to ride with me and I tell him his belly will go down. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Squash that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't worry. It, it, the back don't really take on your belly now because I still, you know, I still have a little belly problem myself. <laughs> but no, seriously, if you want to challenge, ch I challenge you to make it a point of your duty to change the way. The other, the, I saw some people walking the other day and I said, instead of just exercising and walking, why don't you pray for the area? Just walk around that area and pray for it. Because the principalities and the powers that are in there, they are the ones taking the... So like the postcode people, I challenge you, exercise. It's good for your health. Yes. Get up and walk, and because the food that we're eating over here killing us off, number one. So what you do, exercise and map out an area on your, 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 your map, your on your zone, and take authority. So you're going to walk around that area and just exercise and pray. So you're, you're killing two birds with one stone. You're exercising, number one. And number two, you're praying. And guess what? There, there, there could be a house on that road that ends up being yours. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And of course, and we keep praying and we get houses. Of course, I okay. got two. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much. And those on live stream, thank you, Reverend Ezekiel. We just sit right there. Um, we're going to take a quick break, but just to let you know what is coming up, we got um, Cherry Johnson, who is going to be speaking on uh, county lines and uh, social media, one of the whole aspects of social media, whereby it is important that parents actually get to know Snapchat. You know what I mean? Not just allow your children only to know. You've got to understand these secrets. So she's going to talk about county lines as when children are missing, and we think they are missing, but they are not actually missing. They are missing to the parents, but the children actually made themselves missing. We're going to have Paula Perry. She's going to be coming also and talk about um, early, early childhood, talk about Black British History Book. And the High Commissioner is going to come across at some point and give a talk as to his views on the whole issue of knife crime. So we're going to take a 10 minutes and then we're going to have uh, Ms. Sherry Johnson talking about county crime, county lines and social media. So 
Thank you very much. Let us get your comments, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So, as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.